This year, we were actually able to use the MCG guidelines that we had built <clears throat> to integrate with other systems, um, both electronic and actual networking systems, um, particularly the 1115 waiver DISRIP program, so we were able to communicate with those providers over secured messaging, and we were able to use the guidelines um, simultaneously, so we were able to pull many of the um, 17,000 plus guidelines that you have into our own guidelines, run them simultaneously at the point of catastrophic illness or, or injury. So we partnered with some organizations to pilot that, and it was extremely successful. So the subject matter case, uh, experts, the case managers from the inpatient side, along with the payer case managers, along with community case managers, um, came together collectively to help move the um, person through the continuum more efficiently. We realized that um, people were struggling with social determinants of health. Um, we were talking to people and um, post-acute facilities initially, and they were having um, a lot of difficulties uh, dealing with the social determinants of health and moving people, let's say, for example, a traumatic brain injury um, back into the home because uh, home modifications, uh, financial situations that needed to be addressed, they all take a significant amount of time. And so as community experts, that's what we do every day. So rather than wait for a handoff downstream, so in other words, someone moves from ICU to an acute unit, then they are discharged maybe to post-acute, and that can take months um, to go through that process for some of these illnesses. We realized really quickly if we could get in ahead of the curve and work when they are ill still in the facilities, we could already run our guidelines that we created kind of simultaneously to start working on those um, issues so that they would be prepared to move back into their communities. So when um, Crotchet Mountain um, Hospital actually closed, uh, we had six weeks to transition some of the most challenging um, clients in the state, uh, either home or to other f facilities, and we were successful um, sending many of them home after being there for quite some time, sometimes more than over a year. It was really interesting because uh, Crotchet Mountain Community Care is a statewide independent case management agency. It's funded under um, the Choices for Independence Medicaid Waiver Program. And uh, over the last few years, uh, CMS funded the state of New Hampshire to stand up a, the DISRIP program, or the, the 1115 waiver, and they had seven networks set up um, throughout the state. So at, we became a provider on literally, I think, almost every network that they had. Um, to be able to manage people in the community. So uh, I think that was really where we started to see the need to integrate and speak to other providers. So we also um, piloted that aspect of um, MCG. So we worked with providers who had the capability to send and receive information electronically across a secured messaging system. So we started to trend that work and see how successful and how many providers we could reach out to and conduct that work. And that eventually led into um, the system putting in place a statewide shared care plan platform, I think, which is now known as Collective so that we could share information seamlessly for transitions and monitor the population. Our guidelines are actually built into MCG, so we use the guideline modification module to build a home-based community support, like not a home-based case management product where we could um, build in standards of care from multiple um, places, whether that be NCQA standards, we built some of that into the module. Uh, case management standards of practice, we built into the module. Um, state um, requirements, we built into the module. And then we used it as a, a full electronic health record for case management in the community because we couldn't find anything out there that really did that. 
And then we work to level our clients so we can monitor the populations, whether it be from an ICD-10 code perspective um, or a level of care perspective. And so for those high risk, high resource usage um, clients, we would pull in some of MCG's guidelines right into the guideline modification module. So if you open an episode in our guideline, we start documenting, we can add a guideline. So that's where we felt, wow, this is really excellent because now when they're um, somewhere else in the continuum of care, we can reference the guidelines that they're more than likely using at that level. So we're kind of on the same page. We know where they are in the trajectory. So it just keeps us in the loop as to what people are looking at as they try to um, implement clinical pathways from a multidisciplinary perspective. Whenever you exercise best practice or evidence-based guidelines and you hold yourself accountable to something that you should be trying to achieve, a goal length of stay for a particular diagnosis, by pulling these guidelines together and using those clinical pathways and pulling in multidisciplinary teams and other um, entities, you know, you're able to find real successes in keeping people in the community where you want them. People don't want to be placed in a nursing home. I wouldn't want to be placed in a nursing home. So to be able to keep people in the community is really the ultimate goal. So underneath the Choices for Independence waiver, they provide a budget. All of our clients have to be approved for nursing home placement in order to qualify for the CFI program. So the program is excellent in itself. But as the largest provider in the state, to be able to keep 900 people at home when an average nursing home cost annually is in the vicinity of sixty-five dollars to $68,000 a year, yet we can keep them at, at home within a budget anywhere from you know, $13,000 to I would go as high as $19,000 for some of our more complex clients. But that's a significant delta, and it's all in volu volume-based, so a significant amount of money.